Good morning, folks. Today's video is going to be my net worth update for the end of 2021. Q4 2021 net worth update. This one should be a good one because I have paid off my student loans since the Q3 net worth update. So that was about $14,000 worth of debt that I had that I was able to pay off all at once. So I know my net worth is going to go up by a good bit in this review. I have not done the numbers yet. We're gonna do that together and see where we're at. I am filming this on Monday, January 3rd and I was thinking to myself that I needed to do this net worth update and then I realized that the next net worth update that I do is going to be crazy too if I end up selling this house. If you've missed the last few videos for me, I am in the process of moving and selling this house and y'all, <laughs> I cannot believe the response that I have gotten for my house thus far. I'm just gonna refresh here. I have my computer in my lap. My home has been listed on Zillow for a couple days and it's listed as coming soon and like i have mentioned here on the channel before i live in a pretty rural part of north carolina so i really wasn't sure how well my property would be received once it got posted but y'all two days it's not even technically an active listing yet and it's had 1,253 views and 69 saves so far on Zillow. Furthermore, I have five confirmed showings for this place already and it, it goes active tomorrow on January 4th. So I am really encouraged by all of these numbers and I have four showings tomorrow. I have to work tomorrow night too. So this is gonna be fun to try and schedule these showings and work around my night shift work schedule I have. And then the fifth showing is on Wednesday and I'm sure I'll get more requests in before the end of the week. So yeah, my next couple of net worth updates are going to be crazy, but let's focus on this one and see where I was at the end of 2021. It was a good year financially for me, even though it was challenging in many other ways. I'm expecting that my net worth has jumped up quite a bit. So let's jump into the spreadsheet and fill it out. Okay, here we are, coffee in hand. This spreadsheet is something that I just started using in 2021. So this is going to be the first year that I have been using this spreadsheet to track my net worth. And I always forget to mention too, I also keep track of my average savings rate every quarter in this spreadsheet, just because being in the fire movement and trying to reach financial independence and retire early, keeping an eye on my savings rate is something that I like to watch. So starting at the top, we'll look at my assets first. So in 2020, I had my home refinanced and it appraised for $140,000 then and that is the number that I have been using. I will tell you that I did not list my property for $140,000 when I listed it for sale and I listed it for a lot more than that. <laughs> and it has gotten some good interest so i'm hopeful that i will sell it for the price that i asked but again i am going to make a whole separate video about the finances of me moving selling this house and buying the other house the property i put an offer in on is actually getting inspected today so fingers crossed that that will turn out well anyway i'm gonna save the finances for moving for another video and for the sake of consistency since i haven't sold this place yet and who knows what it will go for i'm going to stick with the hundred and forty thousand dollar appraisal value for this house although that is definitely being very very conservative for this place but that's what it appraised for that's what i used for the whole of 2021 so we're just going to be consistent here Next, for my car, I always use um, whatever mint.com says my car is worth. I actually need to update this because my car has almost 15,000 miles on it already. I'm pretty sure, yes, mint uses Kelly Blue Book as far as trade in value. Y'all, this is insane. I bought the car for like 32,000 and apparently it's worth more now. I guess the used car market is still insanity. But again, for consistency's sake, I will go with whatever it says my car is worth. Okay, that did drop it just a little bit there, but still, I 
I owe about 31,000 on the car. We'll fill out the debt section here in just a minute. So apparently I am somehow not upside down on this brand new car that I bought in 2021. So whatever, I, I don't think the used car values are gonna stay high like they are forever, but Again, for consistency's sake, I'm just going to use this number that they gave. So 36,161. Yeah, see, somehow it has gone up from Q3 of 2021. So I don't get it. Things are crazy right now. Portfolio value, I will swing over to the very end of 2021 and take a look at where my portfolio value was at the end of December. Okay, y'all can see it was at 157, 182, 11. There we are. Wow, that's a lot of threes. <laughs> Three is supposed to be a lucky number though, so I'll take it. So these are all of my assets. I keep it pretty simple for tracking my net worth. I really don't have anything like expensive jewelry or artwork or other fancy things that I could list as an asset. So I basically just have my home, my car and the portfolio. I could sell my car and get something cheaper. I am selling my house um so yeah and i can always sell off a portion of the portfolio if i really needed some cash right so these are all of the major assets that i have and that amounts to three hundred and thirty three thousand three hundred forty three dollars and eleven cents so pretty decent jump from q3 of 2021 i was not expecting that and let's see where the liabilities lay one thing i did fill out already is that my student loans are now zero so y'all can see in q3 i had fifteen thousand dollars left to pay off of these student loans so i'm excited to see where these other two land and what the net worth is going to be so let me pop back over to the budget and get current balances for what i owe on this mortgage and what i owe on my car debt Okay, the car is sitting at 310807. And the house is at 959924. All right. Oh, amazing. <laughs> I I was not expecting that. That is awesome. I actually crossed a $200,000 net worth in 2021 how crazy is that that is insane i um i knew it was a good year financially but i didn't think that i would actually go that high by the end of the year y'all i just cannot wait to see what is going to happen with this home sale i mean if things go as well as i am hoping that they are the next net worth update is gonna be wild because I'm hoping that for the next one, I may not have any car debt left either. And yes, I will have um, a higher mortgage, but I'll be interested to see what the new place actually appraises for. Plus I'm gonna put some work into it myself and I'm still hoping that even with making some changes in the new place, I'll still have hopefully a decent lump, lump sum of money that I can invest. I can get my Roth IRA for 2022 maxed out. And if I have anything left over after that, then uh, I'll add that to the portfolio too. So lastly here, let's take a look at what the savings rate was for the last quarter of 2021. And that is just easiest for me to take a look at my budget spreadsheet. I share with you all my savings rate every single month. I'll go back through the last three months of 2021 and get an average number for my average savings rate for Q4 of 2021. Okay, I've got that number. And in case you're new here, just know that I do not include debt payments in my savings rate. I keep it pretty simple for my savings rate calculations every month. I share that with you guys in my budget reviews that I do every month. But for my savings rate, the only thing I really count is the amount of money that I have going towards investing. So I know that other people do it different ways and that is just how I've always done it. So again, for consistency's sake, I'm going to stick with that method. So for Q4 of 2021, my average savings rate went up even though I did pay off a lot of debt. So the student loan repayment is not included in this number.
Y'all, Q4 was a good financial quarter for me in 2021. I, I mean the entirety of 2021, really. I cannot complain about how the year went financially. Of course, it was very challenging for all of us in many ways but at least financially speaking, I have made some serious progress in 2021. This is the whole of 2021 here, my net worth. Let's take a look at the graph. My savings rate went down over the year because in Q1 of 2021, I was busy maxing out my Roth IRA. So all of my extra money went towards my Roth IRA actually for 2020 as well as 2021. So I was doing a lot more investing in the beginning of the year. <clears throat> and then my savings rate kind of slacked off a little bit, but got a little bump towards Q4. The net worth is looking pretty nice here. We are headed sharply up. So I think I'm gonna have to adjust the high end of this graph before I get to the next quarter somehow, because I have a feeling that um, maybe in the next quarter, we might be touching this 250, if not more. I guess it depends what the new house appraises for, but Let's not get ahead of ourselves, right? Because it's just getting inspected today. So I have to wait and see how that inspection comes back before I know for a fact that I'm going to move to the new place. And then also we have to see what this place sells for. There's been a lot of interest, but that does not translate to an offer yet. It goes officially active tomorrow. So with five showings booked in the next couple of days, I'm hoping that I will have maybe an offer or two by the end of this week. I'll keep you guys posted. Okay guys, I hope that you enjoyed this quick net worth update for the end of 2021. I, <laughs> there's a reason why I do this net worth update together with you guys, because I really, I don't know what it's gonna be until I actually put all the numbers into the spreadsheet and I just, I cannot believe how much progress I've made. I wish that I had had this spreadsheet just a few years ago when my net worth was negative, y'all. I mean, I've been on YouTube for years now. If y'all really want to go back and see the cringy early videos and see how far I have come, this is the reason why I started this YouTube channel. It just goes to show that consistency does pay off. You do not have to be perfect in your financial journey, but if you can be disciplined and work towards bettering your financial picture every single month, you'll make progress eventually. I started this whole journey with a very negative net worth, almost $90,000 worth of consumer debt that did not include the mortgage for this house. So yeah, there's been a lot of progress over the years. Yes. I've worked very hard and picked up a lot of extra overtime hours, but when you've got a goal set in your mind and your reason why to reach that goal is strong enough, then the consistency just comes naturally. The journey hasn't been perfect. Y'all know I've made some big dumb purchases. I'm sure there's plenty of you out there who thinks that me buying that new car was a big dumb purchase. <laughs> and you, you certainly could argue that, but I still, I love that car, so no regrets there. And hopefully he'll be paid off soon too. And then I can start calling him Indiegogo instead of OC, short for opportunity cost. So yeah, if you like this type of content, don't forget to give me a like on this video down below. If you like this kind of content and if you would like to follow me on this fire journey, then subscribe. I've made some big moves in the last couple of years and life is not going to be settling down anytime soon. The fire journey continues. I hope that y'all find this motivating for your own fire journey. Thanks for watching as always if you've made it all the way to the end and I'll catch you in my next video guys. Bye.